We are kicking off with WWE as the ending of last month's Bad Blood suggested that Cody Rhodes could be facing both The Rock and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 41 in what would be a blockbuster triple threat match. In an update on WrestleVotes Radio, Joey Votes and TV detailed Cody Rhodes' future plans, specifically if WWE has any plans on taking the WWE title off him in the near future. First, Joey said that WWE has been very happy with Cody as the face of the company, with a comparison being made to how WWE felt when it had John Cena as a full-time talent. Both men are family-friendly babyfaces that represent WWE well, both at events as well as in non-wrestling appearances to promote shows and future plans. With regards to Triple H's plans for WrestleMania 41, Joey Votes said that a singles match between The Rock and Reigns could be the plan for the main event of Night 2. If that happens, then Cody would likely headline Night 1, and later on said that the main event of the Saturday portion of WrestleMania would be Cody Heavy. This would be an acknowledgement of the 39-year-old's efforts over the past year, though there'd be no shortage of fans disappointed if Cody didn't get Night 2. Also, unless Cody faces a certain Chicago-made star on Night 1, these plans could mean another year going by with CM Punk not headlining WrestleMania. Punk had the rivalry of the year with Drew McIntyre, and his pending feud with Seth Rollins has been teased time and again, with speculation that it'll finally happen at WrestleMania. Punk vs. Rollins would make for a difficult decision for Triple H, as it'd be difficult for the WWE CCO to not give Cody the Night 1 main event spot given his hard work. When it comes to Punk, headlining WrestleMania seems to be the only real goal he wants to achieve more than anything and remains one of the few absences from his resume. Only time will tell if he ever gets the chance and the aforementioned triple threat match between Cody, Reigns, and Rock would leave Night 1 open for the best in the world. But what do you think? What two combinations of matches should end Night 1 and Night 2 of WrestleMania 41? Share your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. In spite of his Intercontinental title loss, Jey Uso is riding a high wave of popularity right now, and on this week's Raw, reportedly went off script with a moment to remember. This show was taped in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and saw Jay, Jimmy, and Sami Zayn in the ring, as Jimmy disapproved of Zayn having anything to do with the bloodline again. Jay defended the Canadian, though, even going as far as to dub him Sami Uso in a moment that got a great response from the live audience and fans on social media. On WrestleVotes Radio, exclusively on Backstage Pass, Joey Vote stated that Jay Uso saying Sammy Uso was an unscripted moment that played into the crowd chants at the show. WWE captured a great moment and posted it on their Instagram, and after Sammy Uso, Jimmy, and Jay were walking backstage, with Jimmy again questioning his brother's praise of Zayn. This was a hilarious interaction with Jimmy asking Jay when the last time he or Sami Zayn ever felt oozy before Jay responds by asking him the same. Sami has been invited to tonight's SmackDown to meet with Roman Reigns, the man he accidentally blindsided with a kick at Crown Jewel when trying to help the original Bloodline. All signs seem to be pointing towards a huge match at Survivor Series War Games, and what do you make of Sami Uso? Share your thoughts down in the comments. Now, Shinsuke Nakamura has been absent from WWE TV for months, with his most recent TV match being on the April 22nd edition of Raw against Sheamus. Nakamura has been present at live events where he's faced WWE Champion Cody Rhodes and US Champion LA Knight, among others, but fans are eager to see him back on TV. Now, a new report from Sports Kita Wrestling's Dr. Chris Featherstone has revealed that Nakamura is set to return on SmackDown and will be back in a few weeks. He writes, Shinsuke Nakamura will be making his imminent television return to SmackDown within the next few weeks. He was originally scheduled to return at the upcoming episode on November 8th, but plans changed due to storyline reasons. He was last seen on television on the April 22nd episode of Raw, losing to Sheamus, and his last televised match on SmackDown was a win against Karrion Cross on May 5th, 2023. Current plans are for him to return as a heel. WCW veteran Conan recently discussed the decline of the former Intercontinental Champion who just last year and early into this year was feuding with the likes of Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. On his Keep It At 100 podcast, Conan said he was disappointed by the company's handling of Shinsuke Nakamura, despite initially being excited about his signing and his potential. He said, Nakamura was very disappointing for me personally because he was one of my favorite wrestlers. When I last saw New Japan, after like Nakamura, I tuned out. I liked him a lot, I think the WWE did a great job at resuscitating him, and then they did nothing with him. Only time will tell whether the King of Strong Style will make his potential return as a heel on SmackDown TV ahead of Survivor Series, and who will run afoul of the King of Strong Style. Who do you want to see Nakamura face next, and why? Should he go after LA Knight in the United States title? Share your thoughts down below. After missing all of 2024 due to diverticulitis, Kenny Omega made an appearance in New Japan's Power Struggle event in a huge moment for the former AEW-IWGP world champion. 
Fresh off addressing the fans, during which he teased an in-ring return for Wrestle Dynasty on January 5th, Omega headed backstage where he was quickly confronted by Gabe Kidd. Kidd, frustrated over Omega mistakenly getting his name wrong in interviews, verbally berated the AEW EVP, and things quickly escalated with shoves and punches exchanged. Officials intervened to separate the two, and footage of the altercation has surfaced online, adding fuel to the ongoing buzz surrounding the event. On social media, New Japan's president Hiroshi Tanahashi responded by fining and issuing a formal warning to Kidd for his role in the incident and apologized to Omega for the matter. Tanahashi reinforced New Japan's commitment to maintaining professionalism and strong ties with partner promotions, though there's been no reports confirming that this was a shoot fight. With Omega using his speech to tease a role at Wrestle Dynasty, many have seen this confrontation as kayfabe and the start of Omega's return match, which could be against Kid. While no match has officially been confirmed, Omega's potential involvement would mark a significant return after his hiatus due to diverticulitis and surgery. This altercation leaves fans wondering if it could spark an in-ring rivalry or remain an isolated backstage incident, but whatever the case, Kid and Omega certainly have a lot of attention. After his match with Adam Cole during the latest AEW Dynamite, rumors emerged online about Malachi Black, suggesting that his time with the company would be ending. This is hardly the first time online buzz has suggested that Black is leaving, and on his Instagram story, the Dutchman once again cleared up any speculation. He said, I'm not injured, nor am I retiring, nor am I leaving. I haven't been injured in more than three years. I would really appreciate it if that stuff stops, man. If I'm gonna retire, you're gonna hear it from me, and not after Adam cuts a promo just as a thank you for that match, and that's all it was. According to a report that emerged following the rumors, though, Black's AEW contract is believed to expire at the end of 2024 or sometime in early 2025. Black's social media post may have indicated that he isn't leaving, but it's unclear if he meant he's signed a new contract or if he simply isn't departing AEW immediately. As implied by Black, this isn't the first time rumors have surfaced, as in 2022 it was claimed Black asked for his AEW release after being reached out to by WWE. Black would deny those rumors and has remained with AEW ever since, and we don't expect to see the Dutch wrestler in a WWE ring anytime soon, despite what some online may believe. Now, the Anawaii family has been a part of WWE for decades, and now the family's legacy has grown thanks to the signing of Lance Anawaii. Fightful Select reports that Lance signed with WWE over the summer, and in an image shared by Muscle Man Malcolm this week, Lance was seen in NXT attire at the Performance Center. Unfortunately, Fightful adds that Lance is currently sidelined due to an injury and is not expected to be cleared for action soon, and there's no creative plans for him in NXT or the main roster. Nevertheless, fans eagerly anticipate his recovery and eventual debut, hoping to see him contribute to the ongoing Bloodline storyline that has captivated audiences. Lance is the son of Samu and is the nephew of Afa Jr., who wrestled in WWE as Manu and is a cousin of Roman Reigns and the Usos. The Anawaii family's influence in pro wrestling is profound, with members like Roman Reigns, The Usos, and The Rock achieving significant success in WWE. Now Lance adds another layer to this rich legacy, and with the ongoing chapter in the Bloodline saga, his future involvement in storylines is highly anticipated. What role do you envision for Lance Anawaii with the current WWE landscape? Feel free to share your opinions and join the conversation down below. As Miss Money in the Bank, Tiffany Stratton has attempted to cash in multiple times, including teasing it at Crown Jewel, but her efforts to have a title match have so far been in vain. While a SmackDown superstar, Stratton has the opportunity to cash in on Raw Women's Champion Liv Morgan, and that could be what happens in less than two months. While speaking to Gorilla Position, Tiffany was asked about Raw's upcoming debut on Netflix and teased that her cash-in will come on the historic show. She said, I don't know, maybe I'll cash in there. Maybe I won't even have a match. Maybe, maybe I'll just cash in and become champion on the premiere. Okay, yeah. WWE reportedly wants the show to be as huge and exciting as a premium live event, and having a cash-in would go a long way in starting Raw's new era off strong. Do you want to see Tiffany Stratton cash in her Money in the Bank briefcase during WWE Raw's Netflix debut? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. Last week, Bill Goldberg confirmed that his final match will come in 2025, instantly fueling speculation as to who will be his last opponent. This match will come almost three years after Goldberg's most recent match at WWE Elimination Chamber 2022, and this week, Bill shared insight into his decision to return. Speaking with Scott Johnson of News 4 Jacksonville, Goldberg shared why it's hard for wrestlers to truly hang up the boots, saying, You're not retired until you're dead in the wrestling business. Goldberg's words captured the difficulty many wrestlers face as the call to return lingers long after their supposed last match, and wrestlers want to end their careers with a great bout. 
Fans only have to look at The Undertaker, whose attempts to go out on a high despite his age led to unfortunate matches in its final years before ending triumphant with the cinematic Boneyard match. Goldberg has been hungry for one final match as he has previously said that when he lost to Roman Reigns in 2022, the plan was for him to have a proper retirement match. Speaking to 93.7 The Ticket, Goldberg claimed to have a handshake understanding with Vince McMahon that his defeat to Reigns would not be his final match. While WWE has yet to announce an opponent, many have pointed to Gunter being Goldberg's final opponent, given their confrontation at Bad Blood last month. Goldberg himself has called Gunter the frontrunner for his retirement match, as the WCW legend is ready to make the Austrian pay for what he had to say in Atlanta. That being said, Gunter isn't the only superstar on WWE's roster, and analyst Peter Rosenberg has given a surprising alternate choice for the WWE Hall of Famer's last match. On the Cheap Heat Productions podcast, Rosenberg pitched Dominic Mysterio, saying it'd be easy and great, and added that he'd make Goldberg look like a million bucks. Dominic is a natural heel and would likely ensure Goldberg would get cheered in his final match, as opposed to a more mixed reaction against the heel but popular Gunter. Time will tell who steps into the ring as Goldberg's last opponent, and we'll continue to follow his situation for the latest on what'll be his final chapter in the ring. Are you interested in Goldberg vs. Mysterio, or is Gunter the obvious choice? Perhaps there's somebody else entirely you have in mind. Let us know your picks down in the comments. It was back on June 1st that Becky Lynch's contract with WWE officially expired, and while she chose not to renew at the time, her name has remained on WWE's weekly talent roster. That has sparked plenty of buzz, and now fans of Lynch should brace themselves as there's strong speculation that the man will be coming around sooner than expected. On WrestleVotes Radio, Joey Votes reported that WWE has been in talks with major athletic apparel retailers to expand their merch lineups, and Lynch's name has come up. He said, These companies are worldwide and worth in the billions of dollars, so this is something that WWE is very interested in. Whether she's signed or not, it seems that WWE still holds the rights to Becky Lynch, which is a good sign for her returning at some point. He went on to share that the list of names approved for conceptual use includes legends like Stone Cold Steve Austin, Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns, Bianca Belair, and Becky Lynch. Co-host TC chimed in, hinting at the potential timing of her return as they added, I really feel that Becky Lynch is in the fold and she is on her way back. I think sooner rather than later. I don't think you're gonna have to wait definitely before WrestleMania. I would say maybe at the Royal Rumble, maybe even before then. It's a big thing for me that they included Becky Lynch here, and it just tells me that she is signed. She is moving forward with WWE, and I think we're going to see her back in the ring sooner rather than later. TC emphasized Lynch's role as one of the biggest needle movers in WWE's women's division and would be a valuable asset ahead of events like the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania 41. It was also brought up that the apparel retailer in question is a significant player in women's fashion, making Lynch's inclusion even more telling and further exciting fans. With WWE's plans to partner with athletic apparel giants and include Becky Lynch in the fold, the stars may be aligning for her anticipated return to the squared circle. What do you think about the possibility of Becky Lynch returning to WWE, possibly even before the Royal Rumble? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. In 2022, Brock Lesnar recaptured the WWE Championship inside of the Elimination Chamber, and during which delivered a devastating F5 to Austin Theory from off the top of one of the pods. This was a moment fans had never seen before in the chamber, and WWE fittingly wanted to make sure it'd go well, resulting in some intense rehearsals watched over by Vince McMahon. On the Insight Podcast, Theory recalled the preparations which saw AJ Styles take the bump first, but that didn't save Theory from the former chairman's orders. He said, Alright, this is a story. So I remember the night before, we're at rehearsals and everybody's there, AJ Styles is on Brock Lesnar's shoulders, and there's a crash pad down on the floor. Vince steps up behind me and he goes, I want you to take that. I was just looking, and as soon as he says it, Brock throws AJ to the pad. AJ lands on his side. Anybody who knows AJ, he doesn't cuss. If you catch him cussing, even on TV, that man is angry. But he goes, what the frick? That's stupid. I'm not taking that. Then Brock comes climbing down, and Vince goes, Brock, go back up. Theory's gonna take it. I was like, oh man, I'm just walking through the motions. I'm climbing up the cage. I'm just going up, and I'm just panicking. Brock picks me up. I'm just like, now my whole world has gone from here to sideways, and now I'm all the way up on this pod. I'm just like, I don't know, because that pad is not going to be there. But I was like, here we go. Then Brock's like, are you ready? And I'm like, yep. And he tosses me. And the way I was tossed, I landed on my feet on the pad. So in my mind, I'm just like, okay, well, if somehow he throws me like this again, and I can land on my feet, I'll be fine. 
Many at the time questioned whether the spot was worth it given the immense danger, and Lesnar's title reign would end shortly after at the hands of Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 38. Do you believe Brock Lesnar's spot at Elimination Chamber shouldn't have ever taken place? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Over to AEW and during the latest tapings of Collision, the return of Julia Hart was teased six months into her absence from the company's programming. Hart reportedly injured her shoulder on the April 10th edition of Rampage, but wrestled two matches, with her most recent being at AEW Dynasty this year. During the tapings, it was teased that Hart will go after TBS champion Mercedes Monet and is willing to regain the title she lost to Willow Nightingale at Dynasty. As mentioned earlier, Malachi Black has once again had to deny rumors that he is set to leave AEW, and now we have an update on his situation. We should state that this news contains spoilers for this week's collision, so if you don't want to be spoiled, we recommend skipping the next 30 seconds of this video. At this week's collision, Black was in action alongside Brody King and Buddy Matthews, confirming that the Dutch wrestler has not left AEW, despite what some may believe. This also confirms that his match with Adam Cole was not his final AEW match, again, despite what some have claimed, as he remains a fixture of Tony Khan's promotion. Black is a former trios champion in AEW alongside King and Matthews, and are you pleased that he's sticking with AEW? Give your thoughts down below. Speaking of AEW, Wardlow has been missing since his match at the Big Business Dynamite in March, but now the former TNT champion will be stepping back in the ring. With that said, it won't be a part of AEW, as it's been confirmed that Wardlow will wrestle for Pandemonium Pro Wrestling in their The House Always Wins event in April 2025. This will be Wardlow's first independent match since August 2022, and while it'll be exciting to see him in the ring, it remains to be seen when he'll appear on AEW programming again. Next week, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson will have their long-awaited fight at the AT&T Stadium in Dallas, and wrestling fans will hear a familiar voice for the show. Variety reports that former WWE commentator Mauro Ranallo will be calling the broadcast alongside multi-division boxing champion Roy Jones Jr., a former opponent of Tyson. Actress and boxing enthusiast Rosie Perez rounds out the commentary team, bringing her passion for the sport to the mic in what'll be an exciting night shared on Netflix. During this week's WWE NXT, Rob Van Dam was among the ECW legends who returned to the 2300 Arena, where he was attacked backstage by Wes Lee. Despite this, RVD came out during Lee's match with Javon Evans and created enough of a distraction for Evans to capitalize and secure the victory. After the show, a fan took to social media expressing their wish to see RVD compete, and the legend said, Me too, but I'll be back. Before the main event, Van Dam also appeared in a backstage segment with Kalani Jordan before being blindsided by Lee, teasing that a match with Lee could be in the works. At 53 years old, RVD can still go in the ring, and fans hoping he wrestled during WWE NXT in the ECW arena may not have to wait for much longer. Now Montez Ford also previously stated that he wants to become WWE Champion if the Street Profits break up. To add fuel to the flame, Montez Ford opened up about how things hadn't gone as planned for him in WWE, acknowledging that the Street Profits hadn't achieved what he had hoped for them. He hinted at a new era, suggesting that he was ready to pursue a singles run and seemingly breaking up the Street Profits. Ford took to his Instagram and seemingly debunked breakup rumors as he made it clear that he and Angelo Dawkins will remain together no matter what. Dawkins addressed the situation on Instagram, mentioning how there were always people telling them that they weren't good enough. He also pointed out how they had been disrespected, but emphasized that at the end of the day, they were still the Street Profits. Dawkins shared a message saying, Love to the fam, directing it towards Montez Ford. No matter what may come, we do this together, my brother, forever. Street Profits. They disrespect you. They say you're not good enough. They say you're done. At the end, we are the Street Profits. Love to the fam. Booker T has also urged Montez Ford to make his own break recently. Nonetheless, only time will tell whether WWE will have anything significant planned for the Street Profits in the coming months, as fans feel they more than deserve it. Do you believe the Street Profits will remain together forever, or is Montez Ford working us? Please share your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. And we're ending with NXT, which also saw a huge 10-woman tag team match with Julia, Stephanie Vaquer, Kalani Jordan, TNA's Jordan Grace, and Zaria getting the win. While Zaria got the pin for her team, even pinning women's champion Roxanne Perez, there was some miscommunication in the closing moments, which saw Zaria spear Grace. On Twitter, Grace reacted to the spear, asking if Zaria's face paint also makes her blind, and the Austrian signing responded by mocking the juggernaut's height. Zaria said that she couldn't see Grace behind Perez, who is also short, and Grace fired back saying that spear was one thing, but this insult was unforgivable. These comments may have been tongue-in-cheek, but the two powerhouses could soon share the ring again. And is this a match you'd want to see? Let us know in the comments.